The deciding factor for starting the Saucy Water Coin Laundry was the part that you could do the laundry without contaminating the environment. And if I was going to run a laundromat business, I wanted to run one that is one of a kind, rather than an ordinary one. Prior to opening the business, I happened to know about Saucy Water. I even had it installed at my own house. After six or seven years of installation, I started this business. Up until then, I did my laundry at home, obviously, and I could wash my underwear and such without any problem. Since I knew from experience that the laundry could be clean, I started this occupation. First, this building has 1.5, no, twice the amount of space of ordinary laundromats. The reason is because I have an office next to it. I was planning on making this office my villa since the beginning, and I thought it would be nice to work and have a good time connecting with customers at the same time. Stores typically prioritize customers, and this is going to sound selfish, but I decided I was going to prioritize myself. So, in that sense, this store has plenty of space. Laundromats are usually packed since laundry comes in, customers come in, and it comes to the point where it's a question of whether there is or isn't enough space to sit. I wanted to create enough space where everyone can enjoy. So, to be frank, it costs quite a lot. I required around 44 million Japanese yen to 45 million Japanese yen. A lot of money was required for the machines, the building, and places you cannot see, such as demolishing the previous room and to cover the river. Either way, that amount of money was going to be required. Since then, 13 or 14 years has passed. Now I've been covering the expenses. If I continue working a bit longer, I should be able to pay it all back. There are regular customers who come for the washing machine, and there are some who might go to their closest laundromat because they think washing futon and blankets are all the same, but it's not that many customers. Based on sales, the ratio of washer to dryer is generally 7 to 3. So if you look at the laundromat that have been recently made, you will notice straight away from seeing it that there are many dryers and only two or three washing machines. So there are many laundromats that do not care too much about the washing machine. For my store, there are regular customers who come for the washing machine and I suggest them to dry their clothes as well, so they dry their clothes, and due to that, the usage of dryer is high. Mm, how much does it cost? For the customers who come to do the laundry, it is around 1,000 Japanese yen. 
This includes washing and drying. For those who come for drying only, it is 400 Japanese yen or 300 Japanese yen. The 300 Japanese yen is most commonly used. With 300 Japanese yen, it will roughly get dry. Besides the elastic of underwear, everything else will roughly get dry. If that is fine, then it is 300 Japanese yen. If not, it is 400 Japanese yen. And that is the market price. For washing machines, the valve breaks and so does the electrical system to a certain extent. Also, dust builds up, so I have to clean those areas such as the coin slot and after all the washing machine and dryer has been used for a while, I check the areas where dust has built. I'm usually always at the store and laundries tend to be done using the machines at home and they are placed to the side and are overused. So if I'm not at the store, the same machine will be used and become broken. I do the laundry for more than 50%, well, probably 80% of the time. So when a customer comes into my store, they do not do it themselves. So I operate the machines of 80% of the total sales. This means I can control the situation, such as this machine has been overused, this machine needs to be used. So I have a counter to get a grasp of how many times the machines have been used. I then use the counter as a reference and use the machine in a way that is balanced and equal. The machines have not been used excessively, so they spin very well. First, there is a person here, a grandpa here, and customers come to rely on me. There are times when they say they'll leave the job to me and I say sure. There is no sense of uncertainty in using the machine, and in some situations I teach them how to use the machine such as you should do it like this or like that and they use it after I've taught them. So anyone is able to use this even if they are worried about using it themselves. The rumor of how there is a grandpa there and he'll be there to assist has spread and people have come after hearing that. I have a lot of those customers. Also, now that the internet can be accessed easily, I occasionally receive calls and people also come after seeing it on the internet. The most popular is futon. For example, when a child wets it and there are various reasons, right? They think, oh no, I have to use it today. Maybe there's a place I can get it cleaned at. And they find my store on the internet and they come to me to try it out. I have a lot of those customers too. Where is the furthest location that people have come from to use your service? The furthest is, well, there are also people who come from within the neighbourhood since Kanagawa Prefecture is small, 
but the furthest is they travel 40 to 50 kilometers to come here. In extreme cases, there are people who cross the Great Seto Bridge. Also, people from other prefectures come, such as Tokushima Prefecture and Kochi Prefecture. There are people who go out of the way to come to my store, and also people who stop by while on a trip. Do they come after hearing the rumours and reviews? It's probably people who are aware of sourcing water. The people who come generally know about it. Also, people who are interested in laundry come to my store for that purpose. They say they are on a trip. Really, I have had many people who have come by while on a trip. Within the regular customers, they are people from Tokushima Prefecture, Kochi Prefecture and Ehime Prefecture. Otherwise, 10 kilometers or 20 kilometers does not count as being far away, right? To not disappoint customers. I try to do as much as I can within my power because it expresses my sentiment. Actually, an incident occurred today where not diapers and not diaper sheets, but the absorber bed sheet you place on futon. Well, this was hidden inside the invincible duvet and such. And even if I saw it, I wouldn't notice it a lot of the times. I happened to watch the duvet, absorb and besi and such together. The thing about absorb and besi is, is that it is waterproof. And the thing that happens when you dry waterproof items is it cannot be wrung out. Even if I dry spin it, the water cannot be removed. For example, let's say you do this to ski wear. And when you dry spin it, while it has absorbed a large amount of liquid and remove it, it feels as if you removed the bucket that has a large amount of water inside. This is because it is keeping the water in. So today, the absorbent bed sheet was inside and it was keeping the water in. And dry spinning it didn't work. What I did to solve this is to first drip out the excess water outside and dripping it out doesn't dry it and I can't dry spin it either. So once I have removed as much water as I can, I wipe off the moisture with a towel. And finally, I absorb as much water as I can with a paper towel. Once I feel like it will dry in this condition, I place it in the dryer and somehow manage to get it dry. This is something I'm able to do. So I do this so the customers are not disappointed which will also connect to the profit. The laundry that was washed with the absorbent beshi is also drenched and hasn't been dry spun properly, so I wash it again. I pay for this expense. If I don't do this, the customers will think it isn't the finished product they were expecting and will complain that it is damp. I cannot bear to hear that, so I do what I can within the range of not becoming deficit.
If you ask me if I will get deficit by doing that, the answer is no. By running the washing machine once, the only expense I'll lose is the water usage. So that is what I mean by doing what is within my ability to do it within the range of not becoming deficit. That is my sentiment, to do what I can for the customers, but at the same time, this is a business, so I can't let it become deficit. I do this partly because it is my hobby. I have even built a villa, so in that sense, I am having fun. So as long as it is within my ability, I am more than happy to do what I can to satisfy customers and make them happy. It will be difficult to start a business among all the competitors. In particular, recently, a laundromat business with a red sign has been opening everywhere nationally. If you still plan to open a business in this situation, securing a place is important. Basically, if you secure a good spot, customers will definitely come. So you need to narrow down your choices by thinking, where are the customers? Which apartment do they reside in? And if they were to come to your store from their apartment, which path will they take? Do not choose a place purely because it is available. This store here is leased. I signed a lease for an area that has a heavy outflow and inflow of cars. The expenses will be high. But if you think carefully about the location, you won't have that many major concerns to worry about. With laundromat businesses, you will understand once you experience it. It is not a job you can neglect. Even though there are other stores that are left unattended, that is because it has done a decent job until then, and so a decent amount of customers use it. However, if you listen to the customer's opinion, you will notice they have many complaints, such as their clothes being, being stolen when they've left it unattended in the dryer. This happens quite a lot. So laundromats attract perverts. Perverts come to my store occasionally as well, but I get rid of them by keeping an eye on them. I have never had an incident involving perverts stealing clothing. Also with cleaning. If you shake a blanket or a rug, Dust comes out and it gets very messy. You need to regularly clean the store since the flooring becomes full of dust and hair. If I don't do this, I cannot maintain clean flooring, so laundry mass definitely requires someone to be attending the store. And I can't believe people can go to a laundry mat that is unattended. Customers who come to my store, however, not everyone. 
for those who can sense it, comment on how clean my stories. They get surprised. There are even people who ask whether they should remove their shoes at the entrance or whether they can enter the store while wearing their shoes. That is how clean it is. There are definitely customers who come to my store because I maintain the cleanliness of the store. I also take care of the machines. Other laundromats are left unattended, so it is common for machines to become faulty, such as when customers use a dryer and even pay for it, but it doesn't dry their clothes. If it doesn't dry, they don't know who to contact, so that's one of their complaints. These types of laundromats actually exist. My store does not have those types of problems. So, I think if you're going to open this business, you need someone there. The sales won't increase by 50%, but if you handle it from a customer's perspective and offer a service without any troubles. If you want to open a laundromat like that, then customers will definitely come. If there's someone there, the machine's pain becomes less. If I had let the customers use it freely, then my machine would probably be in a bad condition now. This is also the reason why I can say with confidence that they can still run. The fact that I use them with care, they haven't broken. They're still clean and still run without any problems. I strongly believe that if someone is at the store and can provide guidance to customers, customers can come to the store without any worries and can use the machines with relief. There will be customers who come to the store for that purpose. Salsa water is good for cleaning futons. You can wash most futons such as cotton and wool. However, there is a technique to washing them. I have all the know-how so for those who are thinking of starting a business, they can ask me directly and learn from me. Being able to wash wool is an amazing feature. Feathers can be washed in any situation without any troubles, but if you wash it with a regular detergent, it cannot be cleaned nicely. If you wash it with saucy water, it can be washed very nicely. This is the same for down jackets. When you wash futon, since detergent isn't used, there aren't any remaining and hence can be washed nicely. I'm not sure whether it can be cleaned but if you wash the futon normally with a detergent, it cannot be washed nicely. That is the best part. If you wash wool like usual, it gets ruined so you should avoid that. I did a bit of research on how to wash this and I found a way to clean it. It's perfect now. Any type of futon can be brought in now. In that sense, by using saucé water, you can differentiate my store with other laundromats. So, the store is attended by someone, you can wash most items, and you can obviously wash futon. So, if you have anything to wash at a laundromat, try bringing it to my store first. I can say this with confidence. I have the confidence that I can clean it better than the other stores. Cheap, fast and clean. This meets all three important conditions. In this respect, saucé water has a deep meaning 
for laundry. I recommend customers to bring in the more expensive items here. Please bring them to my store. Customers generally bring cheap items and don't care too much about them. It should be the other way around. From feathers to jumpers, please bring the expensive items here. You will understand it is worth it. There are customers who bring in expensive items such as Muto after washing it once and thinking it is good. Of course, there are some items I cannot wash. Things I think shouldn't be washed here by seeing it. I have made many mistakes up until now. I can wash most items though. I really believe you should bring it to my store if you are thinking of taking it to a laundromat. This is because it is source water and it is almighty. My store is cheap, fast and clean. I have received many positive feedbacks from my customers. There are many regular customers as well. They come every year. There are those who come once a year, but there are also those who come on a monthly or weekly basis. Moreover, there are customers who have the urge to wash it, otherwise they won't be able to settle down or relax. Those customers don't necessarily live close by. There are quite a lot that travel 20 kilometers or so to come to my store. I feel like it is because of these customers that this store is still doing well. So even if a competitor appears in front of me, I'm fine with that. I'll welcome them. I strongly believe I'll be able to continue my business despite this. The sales will probably decrease though. For now, I am enjoying my job. If there's anything you want to wash, please bring anything you want. Also, don't hesitate with the volume. If you bring all your laundry and things go well, you might be able to fit it all in one washing machine. Just bring anything you have that requires cleaning. Among these, there are customers who hesitate and bring only one item such as one blanket. I think it is a waste. If you bring three blankets, you could wash it together and the price won't differ by that much. I will make it clean. Please bring anything you can bring. So, this was the Sosei Water Coin Laundry Marukame store. I'm doing well and I look forward to serving you.